That's the old writing. That's the wait, I didn't do that. You did. That was when we started homeschool this year, and now you're way better. So Judah Man and I just finished our whole first semester of homeschool, of kindergarten. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's kind of nuts that it's already over. Did we love it? Did we hate it? We hate it. What? I knew we didn't. I don't really like it. It's just the, the writing really boring. <laughs> Not really my specialty. <laughs> okay. I want to tell you three things that I've learned, and Judah Man's going to tell you three things that he's learned. Watch do this thing. Just so you guys know, homeschool is not something that I ever anticipated doing. I was not homeschooled. Jonathan was not homeschooled. I didn't even really have any homeschooled friends. We really only started thinking about this journey mainly because our lives require it with all of the travel that we do for our ministry. And little by little, I figured out how in the world to do this thing. Tell me three things that you've learned so far. Number one, one, one. Number one, you, got, you get to do lots of coloring and you um, got to color with numbers. I think you mean writing when you're saying coloring. Oh, uh, writing. You're writing numbers and letters. Number one, you got to do a lot of writing. So the writing that you have to do every day is that you got to do numbers, you have to do math. With a one, you do it like on the top and then go down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then you start right here and then go down here and do a line like that, that's a two. Around the tree, around the tree, that's how you make a free. Down and over and down some more. That is how you make a four. Okay, so you've heard from Judah Man. Now it's my turn. First coffee. Number one, definitely you can choose a plan. Choosing plan was the scariest thing for me. I am the most indecisive person. I tend to want to try out and taste test absolutely every possible option, and then I normally circle back around to the one that I started with in the first place, which is so annoying, but that's usually how I make decisions. And as you probably know with homeschooling, there are a million options, and there is no rubric for homeschooling. I wish there was a rubric. I love checklists and grids and tables and just somebody to say, hey, this is exactly what you need to do. But that, it's just not how it goes with homeschool. I really put this off for a long time because it just felt like a huge weight. I felt like I'm gonna screw my kid up if I don't pick the perfect curriculum from the get-go for him. It's a financial decision. It's a decision that takes a lot of time. I really wanted to get it right. And I felt like I needed to get it right before I'd even tried anything, which is really silly because you don't know it's gonna work until you actually try something. So my advice in choosing a plan, this is at least what worked for me. I just started by giving myself a couple of weeks to just get inspired. No rules, no decision making yet, just getting inspired. And some of my favorite places that I found inspiration are pretty much anything Pam Barnhill. She is an amazing woman and homeschooling mom and believer in Jesus that has an awesome website with a bunch of resources, pambarnhill.com. She has two podcasts that I absolutely love, the Homeschool Solutions Podcast and Your Morning Basket Podcast. They're basically just a hub of all of these homeschooling moms and parents and dads and uh, educators that come on and just share about all sorts of different topics, you name it, it's on that podcast. The Pam Barnhill resources were so helpful to me to get started and it actually led me to this kind of catch-all resource called Homeschool Basics. Uh, it's a book, I got it on Kindle, by Trisha Goyer and Christy Clover. They are two homeschooling moms that have been doing this for a while and just thought, hey, this is really overwhelming to pick what to start with with your kids when you don't really know what's out there. Let's just make a book that's really easy to read and just kind of gives you a brief overview of the basic philosophies that are out there, what forms you need to sign, what you need to do with your school system to get started, because it's honestly not easy to find on the internet. It's so frustrating that 
that's true, but they made this book and I loved it. We picked classical conversations and go to a co-op in our neighborhood, and then we're doing reading, writing, and arithmetic from home. And to pick the curriculum for reading, writing, and arithmetic, I honestly just went to a friend who's been homeschooling her five kids for years, is a wonderful woman and seems to know what she's doing, and I just asked her, hey, what do you do for kindergarten? And she sent me her shopping list because she had a little girl going into kindergarten this year as well, and I pretty much just bought everything she had. And you know what? It's working. Number two. Hmm. You gotta read the Bible. You got to read the Bible every day when you, every Monday. My favorite story is David and Goliath, and I'm gonna tell you why. So, because I like David and Goliath, is that um, David wears a really heavy suit. That that's my favorite part. Yeah. And he says, "I don't need this." <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then when my dad reads it, the big giant um, comes walking to David and, and my dad usually does it like thump, thump, thump. The little boy swings it and even my favorite part is the is when the Bible story um, goes like this, and he died. And, and then David got up to his belly and did this. <laughs> <laughs> the second thing that I've learned is not to let yourself get completely intimidated by other people's choices on curriculum and what their kids are doing. They're is so much out there and it all is really great there's so many great choices out there there are so many cool um, all-encompassing curriculums there are so many cool workbooks with fun whimsical activities and cutouts and it's really easy just to feel like dang it i blew my budget i can't try anything until next year i'm stuck with the book that i have you know you can totally make some changes but i have really had to see that the things that I picked this year are working. And even if there are things that I might like to try with June when she's in kindergarten, or there might be some things I wanna try next year, that doesn't mean the things that I picked are subpar. A lot of the resources we picked this year aren't super whimsical and colorful. A lot of them are more in black and white and they are more straightforward. Thankfully, the Lord has given me a son that really likes worksheets and details and it works for him. And so even though I would like a workbook that is a lot more colorful and exciting looking, Judah is loving his black and white phonics workbook. So we're just gonna go with it. And I'm just gonna embrace what he's actually liking because he doesn't know any different. And maybe we'll try something different next year. More coffee. Number three. <laughs> Let's see here. Sometimes you get to have a prize when you do a contest with the homeschool. Can you give me some more popcorn? Oh. <laughs> get your woman! <laughs> How you do a contest is that you have to set up a timer you have to do the writing that Daddy told you guys about. Um, and then if you have more than less free mistakes, and if you have one or two, then you can have the prize. It could be a lollipop, a gummy, or some kind of candy. You could go to a really fun place, you know? It's just like, mystery so but if you don't get it nothing fun will happen <laughs> you don't get to go to a fun place or anything so the third and final thing that i've learned so far in homeschooling is this and i know this is going to sound really silly but it's that we can all be readers <laughs> mind blown 
I'm not even kidding, guys. I feel so silly saying that. But for the longest time, I have thought of reading as a school subject or a personality type. For example, Jonathan loves reading. He reads all the time, all kinds of things. He's always listening to audiobooks. He just loves to hole up with a good book. And I have felt so bad because for so many years in our marriage, he's been trying to get me to read different books with him and I just never seem to get around to it. And my excuse has just been, well, that's just not me. It's not my personality type. I'm just not a reader. I really could not have been more wrong and this school year so far has really shown me that reading is much bigger than I gave it credit for. The funny thing though is that I used to love reading. I remember being in kindergarten through third grade. Man, I was an early reader. I, as soon as I learned to read by first grade, I think I was just inhaling all of the American Girl books. I loved those, the Boxcar Children, the Sweet Valley Twins, mystery books. I couldn't wait for book fairs. Uh, I loved to get books from yard sales. I loved going to the library. Uh, I loved just holding up in my little window box seat in my bedroom and reading. But I think where it really changed for me, in fact, I know where it changed for me, was in the fourth grade when we started getting grades. And then for me, everything switched. It all became about expectations and getting the grade and reading was just then kind of a means to an end. I only read if it was for an assignment and I really just busied myself with all of my school assignments and reading really got put into two categories, either assignment reading, which was mainly textbooks or the book I had to read for English class and then reading for pleasure. And I just felt like I didn't have time for reading for pleasure. And so I just stopped. And I really haven't done much of that ever since, except for reading my Bible and a few little books here or there. And I've just kind of started to tell myself the lie that I'm just not a reader. That's just not me. I'm just kind of slow at it. And it's okay. Not everybody has to be a reader. It really wasn't until I started homeschooling Judah that I started to realize with the help of some amazing women that have put out awesome podcasts and books that reading and reading aloud is truly the key to everything and that God made our minds to learn largely through story, which is so cool. When we started homeschooling, I kind of just thought that I needed to just teach Judah to read and then we would just read whenever there were assignments that came up. And now reading is like the core and the ribbon that's just threaded through everything that we're doing. It's so cool because we're not just doing the worksheet work, which is working, but because story helps our minds remember things, reading aloud to Judah has baked in so many things that I want him to learn. Having a book that we can sit down and read together just kind of gives us a canvas of a shared experience to talk about a topic. Um, whether that is something about character or virtue, talking about courage or bravery or telling the truth, um, or whether we're just trying to figure out something uh, in math that is told through a story, we can just learn about it by enjoying the fact that we both read this story together and we have a common language to explore this. The other thing that has been incredibly sweet and just invaluable to Judah and I is the quality time that we've had through reading together. I hadn't really thought about it until we started reading aloud more regularly, but reading to Judah truly is as sad as it is. It's probably the one time in the entire day that I am completely 100% present with him. And it's because when you're reading aloud, you can't check your phone or check your email or have another conversation or multitask in any way whatsoever. You literally only can do what you're doing, which is read and enjoy that time together. And it has been so precious to our relationship. Uh, and we have gained so much from that time reading together. And it has ignited in me a new desire to read and a deeper appreciation for the beauty and power of the Word of God. The fact that God reveals himself to me and to all of us through his beautiful, great story about who he is in all of the little stories that make up our Bible. So all that being said, I am loving homeschool and I honestly was terrified and did not know if I would like it at all. 
but it has been so rewarding. I have learned so much and I honestly feel like I'm learning more than Judah is, but it has been so sweet to see all of the light bulbs go off for him and to get to be there for those moments. I really wouldn't trade it. I would love to hear from you guys though, what's working for you. For those of you that homeschool or things that you feel like are totally not working and falling flat and you just want to ditch, I would love to know if there is a curriculum that you like because I'm still in the process of gathering all the things and would love to hear what you're liking. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, just hit the subscribe button so you can stay tuned to future episodes. And if you want to be notified of when the next one's coming, just hit the little bell and it'll let you know. Thanks for joining me today, guys. We'll see you in the next video. Okay, are we done?